Elizabeth Warren wants to forgive student loan debt up to $50,000 just wiped out clean. And she's saying she doesn't need Congress to do it. She can just use her executive authority as president and basically wipe your debt clean. You know, I really do take issue with how Democrats are kind of, they're always playing this, we're going to give you money thing. The problem is the money's got to come from somewhere, either by diluting the or, or inflating the economy or actually taxing people. There's a lot of problems here. That being said, I do believe we need to figure out a way to alleviate student debt, some kind of forgiveness program, and we need to shut down how these colleges are manipulating young people who don't know better. We have to end this culture of telling 18-year-old kids to take out massive debt they don't understand. However, that doesn't mean you get a freebie. So this story we have from the Daily Caller, Dad confronts Warren on student loan forgiveness. Can I have my money back? It's actually quite simple. Why is it that if you saved up money, and, and, you know, skipped a vacation, skipped fancy meals and said, we're going to do the right thing, work double shifts, save up this money so my kid can go to college. If you do that, you get nothing. But if you're somebody who said, eh, whatever, take a loan out, they're going to pay that back. That to me, I think is a serious problem. It doesn't mean we shouldn't figure out a way to alleviate student loan debt and actually end this problem. But it means what Elizabeth Warren is proposing is, is complete BS. Let's read, let's, let's read the story from the Daily Caller. They say the father of a college student was seen confronting Democratic Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren about her plan to cancel student loan debt in a video that went viral earlier this week. The dad chastised Warren over her plan and got especially heated after the senator and 2020 presidential candidate told him he could not get the money back that he saved to pay for his daughter's school. He said, my daughter is in school. I saved all my money. Am I going to get my money back? She said, of course not. So you're going to pay for the people who didn't save any money, but those of us who did the right thing get screwed. It's not even about that. Why are we, it's it's this weird issue where the highest earners in this country, college grads, are being given a big bailout, but poor people aren't. At the same time, it is typically the poor people who had to take out loans in the first place. It's a really weird situation, but I will say this. We do have a problem. It does not make sense that someone could have chosen to live a more humble life, to put that money aside, and now they, they get nothing. Maybe you, gotta, maybe you do got to give them their money back. If Elizabeth Warren's plan is, is to forgive $50,000 in debt, why not hand 50 grand to those who paid out right? Why not just say, instead of forgiving debt, we're just going to give everyone who has a college degree $50,000. That way, everybody, everybody can, can, can use that to, to essentially forgive themselves. If they worked through college or saved their own money, that way everyone gets a degree. It doesn't make sense. It absolutely does not make sense. Now, I have my, my proposal for what we do, and I'll get to that in a second, but let's read more. He said, you're going to pay for people who didn't save money. Those of us who did the right thing get screwed. The man mentioned that he worked a double shift to pay for his daughter's education and accused Warren of mocking his life story. You're laughing at me, the man said. Warren denied that she was laughing, but the dad was not buying her explanation. That's exactly what you're doing. We did the right thing and we get screwed. Warren unveiled a $640 billion plan last year to eliminate student loan debt a plan that would be funded by a tax on the ultra wealthy, which literally makes no sense. You know what, man? You know what Warren's doing? I'll tell you what Warren's doing. She wants the youth vote. So she's telling all these college kids who have massive debt, I'm going to forgive your debt. If you vote for me, you'll have no more bills. That's basically what she's saying. It's not how the world works. Okay. The The wealth tax is a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. I am telling you this. Let me explain. The wealth tax where Warren gets up on stage and just spews word vomit because she's lying. She lies all the time. Think about what we could do with two cents, she says. It's not real. Jeff Bezos does not have liquid assets totaling $170 billion. He doesn't have two cents. Stop. What I'm saying is Jeff Bezos salary last year was reported $83,000. With his options and other benefits, he gets about a million bucks. So yeah, you could tax Jeff Bezos a lot, and you probably already do. Now, he's a billionaire in net worth. I don't know if he can even, even legally sell the stock in Amazon because there are restrictions. His net worth is based on a nebulous value determined by the confidence in Amazon, not something that you can tax or spend. So then the other question is, man, I can't stand these people on Twitter. When I point this out, you cannot do what Warren is saying. You cannot forgive debt this way. She is lying to you to get your vote. If you taxed Jeff Bezos in terms of the government literally seizing his shares of Amazon, 
Stock in Amazon would co- would collapse completely. The fear of a government takeover seizing the assets, they'd be like, that's not a company I'm going to invest in. The value of the stock would plummet and it would become worthless. No one would buy it and the government would have seized nothing. There's another big funny thing about Warren's lies. The other big thing, and, and Bernie too, Bernie's wealth tax idea, none of these things make sense. If you're talking about doing a wealth tax to uh, uh, pay for certain programs like med- medical or, or college, you realize once you extract all of the wealth from Jeff Bezos, there's no more rich people to tax anymore, right? Now, if you're, if you're a far left and you think there shouldn't be billionaires at all, congratulations, the wealth tax will get rid of that. But what Warren is doing is trying to simultaneously claim we're going to do a wealth tax, get rid of billionaires, and then we'll be able to pay for free college. But that's a finite resource. If there's no more billionaires, who are you taxing? Here's what Warren plans to do. Elizabeth Warren doesn't want to actually, I don't know, have Congress pass a law. She says she's going to use her own executive authority to just end college debt. On her website, it says, I'll direct the Secretary of Education to use their authority to begin to compromise and modify federal student loans consistent with my plan to cancel up to $50,000 in debt for 95% of student loan borrowers, about $42 million. It'll also direct the Secretary of Education to use every existing authority available to rein in the for-profit college industry, crack down on predatory student lending, and combat the racial disparities in our higher education system. Okay, second part, I get Look, we got, to, I mean, the racial disparity thing is where, you know, she's, she's getting a bit pandery because she's not actually explain what any of that means. But in terms of predatory student lending, yes, colleges have, have increased the cost. They're, they're, they're tricking people and taking classes they don't need. Our whole society has told people you must go to college. So something really funny happens. These people graduate from college, right? With, with student loan debt and they got to pay it off. But their, their average earnings are substantially higher than say a high school graduate or a high school dropout. So we really are looking at the highest income earners in the country being given a bailout. And check this out. Don't take my word for it. NPR actually brings up that it's going to be the wealthy for the most part. Let me let me let me pull up the specific part about how the wealthy they say this. Is it a good idea? They're talking about Warren's executive authority. The debate has been raging since last year when Warren first unveiled her plan. One critique from Adam Looney of the Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center, says Warren's plan would disproportionately benefit the wealthy, with the bottom 20% of borrowers by income reaping just 4% of the savings. As such, Looney asks, why are those who went to college more deserving of aid than those who didn't? Serious question. Let let, 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 Let me phrase it another way. Maybe you have student loan debt. Maybe it's, it's, it's hard and you gotta pay it back. You realize that these people who have that debt are likely, more likely than not, like on average, making what, like 50 to 60% more than high school grads? Yeah, pay back the loans. Let me tell you something. He brings this up, the dad who confronted Warren, about how, you know, his buddy goes on vacation and buys a new truck or whatever. What did he say? He said, I don't know. I don't know what he said. Something about buying a new vehicle or something like that. He saved. His buddy's kid then takes out a loan and now Warren's going to just forgive him. So put it this way. I don't care where they spent the money. Let's say both families have $50,000. One family decides to splurge, buy whatever they want. Now they're in debt because of college. The other family says, we're not going to splurge. Warren gives the family that splurged the money. I don't care where they spent their money. In the end, both families will, will have a kid out of college. One family will have a ton of free stuff. To put it simply, if a family chooses to buy a new truck and go on vacation, and then Warren pays for their, you know, for their college, you may as well have just said Warren bought them vacation and a brand new truck because it doesn't matter how they decide to spend their money. You know, what I, you, know you see what I'm trying to say? I'm talking about the total output of value that an individual will, will retain. If Warren pays back that 50 grand, you may as well write a check for 50 grand to literally everyone because it doesn't make sense. You'd only give it to the wealthy college grads. And I understand you're like, but Tim, they're not wealthy. They're, they're you know, they're, they're, they're in debt. You're right. And they make more money on average than a high school graduate, which stands to reason that's because they got to pay their loans back. Now, I do think we have a serious problem with loans, and I can talk about this. Elizabeth Warren is lying to you. Let me make that very, very clear. She's absolutely lying. 
The wealth tax can't function this way. It's going to benefit the wealthy. Even NPR highlights this. The, the bottom 20% are only going to get 4%. Like, as per usual, Ivory Tower Elizabeth Warren is talking about helping the rich. How amazing. Yes, college graduates. They're the ones who need the bailout. What about mortgages? Remember that the, the financial crisis? No, they bailed out the banks. You see how it works? The bailouts always go to the rich people. Surprise, surprise. Now, we do have kids that I think were victimized by predatory snake oil salesmen at colleges. I think colleges are very corrupt. And I think a lot of people, for various reasons, would agree with me how bad they are. You got the ideology problem. These kids go to college and then come out as insane communists. Not all the time. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say it is, but it, it does happen to some people. To a lot, actually. Here's the thing. You don't need college. Okay? I love how the left, it, it's, it's really funny. I'm a, so I'm a high school dropout by choice. There's a big difference between a high school dropout like me who was building computers at eight years old and playing music, skateboarding and, and, and you know, starting my own little companies and stuff. And like your average person who like, I don't know, gets his girlfriend pregnant and then drops out and goes to work at like a McDonald's. It's a big difference. But I really, really love how here I am. I, I'm spending all this money, like building out my business, very successful, big following. And these people on Twitter who don't understand any of this are like, LOL, but you're a high school dropout. I'm like, that's the point. Don't you understand? You too can be a high school dropout, but become successful and smart and work hard. There's a TED talk. They talk about the one factor that determines success. One thing. They found that no matter how old you are, no matter your race, your age, your gender, there is only one thing that determines success. Perseverance. They call it the grit factor. What that means is you take a wealthy white male with a million dollars and with no grit, they will likely fail. You take a poor person from the south side of Chicago who dropped out of high school and with perseverance or grit, they will succeed. A mixed race person, nonetheless. Just to, just to, just, just to rub that in for you guys, because I know you love when I say it. So here's the thing. A lot of these kids are being lied to. You know, when I was growing up, I was hanging out at a college with a, with a bunch of my friends. They were a little bit younger than me. It was actually my friend and her friends, and they were a little younger than me. And I was like, I think it was when I was like 19 or 20, and they were like 17 or 18 talking about just starting college. Me, never finished high school. And some, one, one girl asked me like, what, they're, they're all talking about what they wanted to major in, how much they plan to make. And I was asked, what, 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 do you, what about you? What are you doing? And I said, I'm not going to college. And they were like, why not? And I was like, waste of time and money. I'm not going to take a bunch of debt to go to school and then cross my fingers to get a job. It's just ridiculous. And this girl said, she, she laughs and she goes, so what, you want to work at like McDonald's? She's like, when, when, when I'm graduating, I'm going to make $70,000 a year and you're going to be working at McDonald's. And sure enough, what ended up happening was when I, uh, by the time she had graduated, I was a director at a nonprofit, not making a lot of money, but I was I had a career. I was a director at a nonprofit doing fundraising and she worked at a Starbucks. And so it's like, what did you think was going to happen? Did you really think you would graduate and make $70,000 a year? That's crazy. But here, that's what, the, that's what the, the, these kids, they're having their minds filled with this garbage. Let me tell you something very, very simple. Simple math right now for all you about to go to college. If you know somebody about to go to college, if you're about to go to college, you got to listen to this right now. If you told an investor, you give me $40,000 and in four years, you will have negative $40,000. They're going to laugh at you and say, that's insane. I'm not going to make that investment. Now, take a look at this. Let's say you go to school and uh, you take out 40 grand to pay for, you know, four years, whatever, wherever you go. You're now learning, reading books. You're not really doing a lot of work. You might have an internship. You're spending money. By the time you graduate, you are negative 40 grand plus interest. Now, imagine your counterpart. At 18, year old, at 18 years old, instead of taking a loan with zero dollars, gets a job at Starbucks. Four years later, that person who worked every day, the same amount of time, you know, putting in the same amount of work you did, Let's say you go to school, you do 40 hours a week of, of school work and stuff. It's, it's actually more probably. And your counterpart at Starbucks puts in 40 hours a week. Do you know where that person after four years at Starbucks will be and how much they'll be making? They will, if they choose to, staying there and persevering and, and having grit and wanting to, to move up in the company, they will likely be a manager. It's, it's in, well, I don't, I don't want to say likely, but they could at least be assistant manager. I mean, it's four years. They're 22 years old now. Tons of experience running the store. I think it's very likely they would receive raises and promotion. But more importantly, let's say they get no raise, no promotion. They're just your barista. 
You graduate from college, you're all proud of your degree, and you are negative $40,000 plus interest. And that barista was making 12 to 13 an hour for four years and saved up a little bit. Guess what? What's the net worth of the barista? Way higher than yours. Congratulations. Four years later, the barista actually has cash saved, has a job, has experience, and you have no real real world experience. But hey, maybe you got that liberal arts degree that's going to allow you to go and try and work at Starbucks. And guess what? In all likelihood, if somebody went to school and said, I want to get a degree in something, the likelihood you will use a degree is actually moderately low. I think it's around 50%. I could be wrong. But here's my favorite part. Do you know what would happen if you were 22 years old, graduated from college, and started looking for a, a, a simple job to, to, get, to, to get on your feet? You will find that your counterpart, maybe your friend from home, is now the assistant manager or manager of a Starbucks, and you're asking them for a job. And they say, well, I think we could use somebody you know, on cashier. It pays 12 bucks an hour. And guess what? They're probably making 40 to 50. In fact, there was a story recently about Taco Bell offering $100,000 a year to managers. College is a scam. Now, if you want to work in academia, you want to be a scientist, a researcher, a philosopher, okay, then college is where you go. If you want to be a lawyer or a doctor, yeah, college is where you go. If you want to work in the music industry, don't go to college. You want to be an artist? Don't go to college. College is for networking, but you don't need to go to college for networking. I'm surprised by my friends who went for art degrees because like I want to work in you know video or, or, or painting or photography. And I'm like, just go do it. The people I know who are successful in filming and journalism, they didn't go to school for it. Not at all. Because when you, when, when, when you get a degree and you have salary requirements, it makes it harder to actually get in. Now you might make some connections, but in the end, you, you the, look, man, I'll tell you this too. I'll tell you this. I can speak specifically about journalism. Because I get asked all the time, how do I travel the world, Tim? And, and you know, for, I had a period for several years where I was traveling around covering all this conflict. Now I'm more of an indoor kind of guy. It's a, it's a typical career track for a lot of people who do journalism. For me, it's mostly about the danger level was too high as my profile. The more followers I gained, the more threats I started getting. And so I've traveled less and less and less. But now I'm, you know, my business is growing and we're funding people to do real journalism. It's kind of the business plan, right? But people ask me, I want to do what you did. When you worked for Vice and, and, you know, ABC News, Univision, when you were traveling around covering the stories, you went to Fukushima and Egypt. Yes. And I did it without a degree. I did it without a diploma. You want to know how I did it? Got in a plane and went there. And guess what happens? This is the big secret they won't tell you. OK, if you get a degree in journalism and you go get a job at a news outlet, do you think they will ever send you out into the field? The answer is no. You know why? You have no experience. This was the funniest thing to me. There were people at a particular company, I'm not going to name, and they were like, they won't even let me go to the streets of New York City because they can find someone else for the same rate who already has the experience. Congratulations. You went to J school, you got an internship, but you've never traveled. You've never been on the ground. You have zero experience and they don't want to send you out. Bravo. Meanwhile, high school dropout, bought a plane ticket, flew to Spain, flew to, uh, you know, the UK, various other countries in Europe, comes back and they say, do you have international experience covering conflict and crisis? You bet I do. Absolutely. Where would you like to go to Brazil? Yes. And then I started traveling to more and more places internationally. I've been to Thailand during the big conflict. Scary stuff. I, I, I got to see this truck, bloodstains on it. Yep. Why? Because the company asked me if I had traveled internationally, had a passport, had experience covering conflict and crisis. The answer was yes. You know why? While you were in school, be, saddling yourself with massive debt, I was out traveling the world getting real experience. And that's the big grift. Now, I'll tell you this. This is why I'm sympathetic. I don't blame young kids. You know, 18 year olds are adults. Fine. But what, what would they know? They have bad guidance and they have people trying to steal from them. So here's what we need to do. Here's my proposal. We do not give $50,000 to random people. That makes no sense. We, 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 we freeze the interest rates. We, we, we don't just freeze them. We, we just eliminate interest on student loan debt. You know what that means? If you took out $50,000 in debt, you had to pay back $50,000. But as of today, that will not accrue. It will not go up. You will not be in a stress position where you're like, oh no, what am I going to do? Based on your income and whether you have a job, you will have to pay, start paying it back. So we make sure those people have to pay it back, but we make it so that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. The big problem right now with student loans is that if you defer payments or you're out of work, the interest starts racking up and then you're not even paying anything off. The other issue 
is that for a lot of people, you're spending more on the interest than you are on the principal, which means every month, most of the money you pay doesn't even go towards reducing the loan you owe. Well, stop. You owe 50 grand? Okay. What, how much money do you make per month? Two grand? $200 has to go back towards that loan. That's your maximum. You can pay more if you want, but that's, or that's, that's the minimum payment. You have to pay at least 200 bucks. You can pay more if you want, but all of it goes to the principal. No interest. You're good. If you don't have a job, you don't got to pay it back. It will never go up. That's what I think we should do. Because I do think we've got millennials who can't have families, who can't buy homes, and that's really, really bad for all of us. You got to understand, I don't want to give anybody a free ride. But if we don't take care of this now, millennials, they're not going to have families, no kids, the housing market will collapse, and our future generations are looking really, really bad. So let's have some empathy, not just for those who are tricked, but for our own civilization to say, if we want people to carry on to the next generation, they're going to have to be able to do it, not through this way. So I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. YouTube.com slash TimCast, and I will see you all then.